Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. I'm Jesse Waters along with Kimberly Guilfoyle, Juan Williams, <laughs> Dana Perino, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. A new year, a fresh start. 2017 was a big year for The Five, and 2018 will be even bigger. Why don't we kick it off with some of your questions? We'll answer them throughout the hour. Let's begin with Richard S. He wants to know, what is your story of the year? Greg, what do you think? Uh, initially, I was going to say us moving to 9 p.m. and what a great idea that was. <laughs> it changed everything, how the show turned out. I mean, being at 9 o'clock was great. But now we're back at 5, so I had to change that. I call this year the great disconnect, mm. which is uh, the difference that is between what people are feeling and how things are actually unfolding. So you have a lot of people feeling emotional uh, about the every day being so different and the news being so fast. Some people think it's the end of the world. Other people think it's the greatest thing ever. But meanwhile, when you divorce the, dis di the feeling from action, it's a pretty good year. The stock market's up, uh, unemployment's down, there's deregulation, ISIS is destroyed. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening. It's, very, it's like a solid year. That's the disconnect. It's the solid part of the year versus this kind of like chaotic emotional sense that people are dealing with. Yeah, no one uh, has any idea what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dana Perino, what is your biggest story? I think it is the turning back of ISIS um, because mm, before, if you look at in 2016, especially what was happening to uh, young women all across the Middle East, the Yazidi women in particular, mm. being just absolutely raped, tortured, um, this wholesale destruction in that area, and that because of the rules of engagement changing and other countries pitching in to help, that ISIS, not dead by any means, but certainly uh, without its territory anymore, I think that to me is probably the most consequential story of the year. I was going to go with the launch of the daily briefing. Oh, but now God. I think I'm going to go with He's the retracting ISIS that. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Juan Williams, what do you think? I don't think there's much question. It's the hashtag Me Too people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's changed so much. I mean, it's just a really tumultuous time. But I'd also say that so many people say to me, they just feel like they're living in crazy times, uh, that things are just wild. I mean, it's just like. Nobody knows, like a roller coaster ride just to go through life these days, to pick up the paper. Some people tell me they can't even take the news anymore. They, they want to listen to music or watch. Now, are these voices in your head, Juan? Sometimes, <laughs> except I have to be in the news. So, no, but I mean, obviously, President Trump's inaugural was huge. I think we've had big change in terms of public attitudes on health care. Obamacare suddenly is popular with people. Those are big changes. The popularity of Obamacare did not see that coming. <laughs> coming yes. <laughs> Kimberly, what do you we think must the biggest have story it. was? Yeah, slept right through that. Um, I definitely would have said ISIS if we started this end of the table. I concur <laughs> with my yeah. esteemed colleague over there because, you know, every time I talk to people about politics and about what's going on in the world, they talk about this. And it's such an important issue that everyone says, wow, I wish we heard more about this because it's such a tremendous turnaround and also with the rules of engagement. But besides that, I would say, um, the economy, too, in terms of what we've seen are tremendous uh, increases in terms of job numbers and really things like moving in a good forward uh, progression. So I'm happy about that, and especially for the families. Can I, can I throw in a B, a B level? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the B level would be the weather. You know, uh, crazy you know, weather, yeah. Yeah, it has been. I mean, huge storms. I mean, what happened in Texas and Houston in yep. particular? And it wasn't just there. Remember what happened in Miami? Mm -hmm. I mean, they had pictures from Miami, like Biscayne Boulevard, like, I'm like, what? Yeah, also a lot of shootings. Uh, you know, still don't have a lot of answers there. Question from Steve B. What would you like to see the Trump administration achieve in 2018? Kimberly, what's left at this point? I don't know. I'm almost tired of winning. Yeah, because this yeah. is what he said would happen. And we all thought, wait a second, that sounds like uh, but no, you know, overachiever. Um, what, what would I like to still yeah, see happen? 2018. I don't know. I probably a continuation of the fight against terror because, you know, yes, ISIS has um, definitely been decimated and tremendous grounds have been made, however, and gains. I'm still very concerned about Al Qaeda and other offshoots, AQAP, et cetera, that are really fighting to kind of take that mantle that ISIS held, you know, mm -hmm. trying to push forward in the caliphate. I'm really curious about what yours is, Juan. Go for it. Oh, I think number one is, you know, from my perspective, if the president could deal with immigration reform, specifically the kids who have been 
are so anxious, feel threatened by the idea that DACA would go away and they would be instantly deported in a few months. The president has set a deadline of March for this year. Uh, and I think he's in a, you know, what I would call in cliche terms, so I'm ready for Greg to leap on me, Nixon goes to China terms, that he, he is so hard line on immigration that if he's able to cut a deal, mm -hmm. I think his base is not going to say, oh, it's a bad deal, it's amnesty, that they might actually embrace and say, well, let's give it a chance, but Donald Trump's doing it. I was going to agree with you on immigration, except I say I'd like to see the wall built in 2018, oh, or at least please. begun. Oh, my God. What do you think, Dana? Well, I'm going to do one that might sound uh, not that lofty, but I think it's super important, and it's achievable in a midterm election year, and it would take something all across, like an administration effort, and that is to ease the way for people to adopt children. Um, I think that from the... For, the um, what do you call that, uh, foster care programs. There are a lot of p people who are willing to take care of them, but the way to uh, adoption is actually quite cluttered, and there are regulations that um, could change. I think there's stuff you can do within um, the federal government to help improve upon that. But also, international adoption has been way, way down, and there are American couples that would love to adopt children from anywhere from all over the world, but there have been all of these rules put in place, and I think that President Trump possibly working with the First Lady could actually turn that around, and it would be really worthwhile. I always thought that Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State should would have done something more in that realm, but she never did, and this is an opportunity that they could really make a difference. It's a very pro-life type policy, and it could help bring a lot of joy to American families. Mm, and that'd be achievable, I think. I think so, too. Very thoughtful. Greg Gutfeld. Mm. Fat kids. <laughs> what? Got a lot of fat kids out there. We got to get those kids skinny. Yeah. I think it's a problem. A Too many fat, fat kids. kids. I thought you liked fat kids. I love fat kids. I'm being sarcastic. Clearly. I, I, I'm, kind of, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in the world you of Kimberly. What? I still believe it's terror, but I believe it's, they have to really focus on the marriage of terror and technology. Yes, that's true. Uh, because we've seen over the holidays what happened in Atlanta when an airport goes dark Total panic. Imagine if that was happening in every city. I think we have to think about what happened, uh, attacks on our grid. I don't know what he can do that he could tell us about, though. He probably ha couldn't tell us what they're doing. We also need a plan against the robots. Yep. Because they are coming, they're and they are coming. becoming self-aware. I'm on their side. Terror robots. <laughs> Terror okay. robots. Terror robots. Moving on. Question <laughs> from Lindy R. What is the dumbest resolution you've ever made? Let's start with Juan. Well, I was going to try to eat less ice cream. That's never going to happen. And that didn't happen. Didn't happen, man. Yeah, I did that, too. I tried to ban all dessert. Mm. And I think it lasted about three months. All teenage boys. Oh, wait, you three months. months. That was pretty good. That's I was actually proud of myself. Yeah, yeah, high yeah. five, yeah. What about you, KJ? I, I think I'm going to call fake news on that. <laughs> I, I don't think you lasted three months. Are you calling me a fat kid? Good <laughs> on you. Good on you. Uh, mine would also be one time I thought that I wasn't going to eat salami or any kind of cured meats, but that obviously was an epic failing. I lasted like 24 hours. And thank you again, Dana, for my nice uh, present with all the delicious salami. Oh, yeah. What do you think? What was the I think, um, and made? actually, I had made the resolution while we were here, and God felt that. Sorry, not God. Greg. <laughs> Look at it. Greg says, um, that's stupid. Why would you even try to do that? And it was to try to drink less wine uh, and, like, maybe not drink during the week. Um, but that didn't last. And then, like, the more... If you make a resolution, then you think about it more. And the more you think about it, the more you want it. Okay. I just... I agree with Gutfeld. That was a really dumb resolution. Mm -hmm. Or Greg, or for that Greg. matter. Both of them you know, agree with My it. dumbest resolution was last year when I tried to quit being so selfless. <laughs> and I said, I go, you know what? I've been, I've been giving too much of myself to so many people. It's time to think about Greg... <laughs> Think about Gutfeld. And, but then I realized, you know what? I can't, I can't change me. I can't change being so selfless and, and so willing to help other people less fortunate than me. And let's face it, that's 99.9% .9 of the population. That's like yeah. in the interview when they say, what is your biggest weakness? And you say, I just work too hard. I care too much. I care yeah. too much. He Thank just... you for explaining my joke, yeah. Waters. Uh, yeah. Okay. For, <laughs> some of the people are a little inebriated. Um, all right. <laughs> this is from Victoria E. What was the best year in your life and why. Let's start with you, Dana, and I bet it's this year because I joined the five. That's right. <laughs> and the daily briefing started. That's true. <laughs> the best year of my life, uh, I, these are difficult. I'm pretty grateful for every year that I've had. I think... Um, <clears throat> met Peter. It, yeah, I was going to say that the year that I met Peter and moved to England and had that oh, experience of being um, newly married and overseas with a new puppy and then moving back to America, like that year was crazy and I can't believe that 
We left the, the United Kingdom and came back to the States. We decided to live in San Diego because we could. I didn't have a job. He was going to start a business. We didn't have a car and we had a puppy. We didn't even have a bed. And we had to do all of these things that I think right now, if I looked at how adventurous that was, I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah, mm. my best year was when you left the country also. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Kimberly. Oh my God, I'm you're kind of mean sometimes, right? Uh, mean Mondays. He's like the mean. So well, the best year, um, I would say, Sundays. yes, for sure, was the year Ronan was born, was 2006. And that oh. was very, very fun because every day, as much as I miss my mom and dad, I get very excited when I see his little face because yeah. he reminds me so much of them. And I thought, wow, this is really incredible. Adorable. Greg? Oh, I would have to say my favorite year was 1984 because we proved that that book was just garbage. <laughs> Remember? Oh, 1984. Uh, 1984 was fine. <laughs> okay, Juan? Uh, you know, I mean, it, I, it's hard for me because, you know, you get to be a certain age and you're like, boy, there's a lot of years. And time goes faster now. And I, I was always curious. I was always curious. Why does time seem to go so fast? How did we get to be... New Year's Day. I, I'm like, wow, I just thought it was Easter the other day. Can I explain that to you? Well, no, I was going to say that somebody <laughs> said to me this this year, to actually 2017, last year, they said to me, as you get older, your life, the, the day, 24 hours, is a smaller percentage of your total life. I think I told you that. No, you didn't tell me, but yeah. it's interesting, isn't it? It's an yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. concept. You have the, basically, you have more behind you than in front of you. So what's I don't in front know about of you that. by a fraction is smaller. That's why when you're a kid, when you're like four years old, a birthday is like an eternity, and yeah. the night before Christmas is like seven years. Yes. <laughs> but then, like, as you get older, there's a fraction. It's nothing. That's why I've calculated that one week at the age of 53 is, is basically one day when you're six. Well, oh, and summertime. That's uplifting. Summertime. <laughs> I know. Things like summertime <laughs> and snowfall. There. We're going to do this really quickly. Yeah. Um, real quick around the horn. Question from Donna W. If you could assume the identity of another person for 2018, <laughs> Who would it be? Greg, assume uh, that person's identity. Uh, my twin brother, Gunther. Gunther. Yes. Are we allowed to call him Gunther? Yeah, we're allowed. Okay. Gunther Gutfeld. He's sometimes here when I'm not. <laughs> we just can don't tell. know when. All yes. Right. Dana. I don't know. I've always wanted to be the ambassador to Tanzania. Really? Yes. Yeah, no, okay. she really does want One day. Job. Like Play your cards years. right, the president might make that move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got plenty of good people right now. But like in 20 years, it would be great. Okay, Kimberly. Um, I think I would like to be Theresa May. Ooh. Yes. Along with the royal news. Yes. Yes. Now you're catching you on. You can go to the wedding. I can be in charge that's of all how, things that's awesome. That's why she wants to go to the and wedding. And I be there at the wedding in May. I can be my own official, for <laughs> real, uh, royal correspondent. And also, um, I could work, uh, you know, strategically with the United States and with President Trump. Oh, is that how it is? <laughs> that's how you're getting in, huh? <laughs> All right, well, you caught me. One here. <laughs> well, I just want to have fun with it, so I'll say Giancarlo Stanton, who just got traded oh, yeah. in the last year to the Yankees. He's number one biggest Superstar. home run hitter in the National League in 2017. Now he's with the Yankees, and guess what? He's got a big home run hitter to protect him, so I think this guy's going to have a spectacular. He's going to be a big star in New York City. I know what your resolution is. What? No, what? no more no, guess, guess what. what? Oh, oh. I can't do it, man. By the way, I can't do it. Guess what? All his selling out. Coming up, some of our predictions 2018 and more on the five. Welcome back to The Five. During this year's uh, New Year celebration, we're answering questions from you, our viewers. I was just thrown off by that music because it was not country and it was kind of <laughs> confusing. So thanks to all of you who posted these questions on our Facebook page. The first one comes from Hazel G. Kimberly, name only one thing in 2017 that had the biggest impact on you. I would definitely say it's the Trump presidency in terms of the amount of coverage and stories we were doing and just the level of like political rhetoric and some of the vitriol that you would see back and forth, people being very divided depending on, you know, if they were Hillary Clinton supporters or Bernie Sanders or, you know, President Trump and just kind of experiencing that, um, the impact of that of the news cycle um, as it relates to the mainstream media too and how mm. stories were covered or not. Greg, you're... One thing in 2017 had the biggest impact. Uh, I would have to say bread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I I I'd done so well not eating bread, and I'd lost a lot of weight. And then when we moved to nine o'clock, like I was getting off at ten, it was like I was just eating sandwiches all the time, and I put on like 15, 
maybe 20 pounds. No, uh, you uh, didn't. I feel like I have. No. And I'm going to try. Then should they go for the wide Wait, shot? I <laughs> thought you got a little skinnier, it seems. No, that just, that's just the tie. No, I'm I don't wearing think, skinny there's ties. There's no way that you gained 20 pounds. Uh, well, anyway, that's the biggest impact. I blame I would say bread. that the biggest impact for me was being on at 9 o'clock for those yes. Uh, yes. five months and then realizing how much I really like to go to bed at 9.45. Well, there was so much news at that time, too. It's really true. I was, was so sleep deprived for, hour, uh, for days. Uh, you? Mine was just joining the five. Because before, a I was running around in the streets like a maniac, <laughs> and that schedule was nuts. And then this schedule's much easier and simpler, and I can sit and rest my feet. Well, we're glad to have you. And Juan, you? You know, I, I, it's such an emotional year on so many levels. I think sometimes you forget what happened in 17. Things like Las Vegas. Right. Mm -hmm. Just really like, wow. In Sutherland or, Springs, Texas. Yeah. yeah. At the church. And I, I, these things upset me at some level. And then, of course, something that I, it's not personal because it doesn't connect with anybody in my life, but I just was overwhelmed with the opioid thing and how mm -hmm. extensive it was, and particularly the idea that, you know, people you wouldn't normally associate with this found themselves grappling and their families struggling because we had an opioid crisis in America. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, question from Jackie T. Greg, I'll start with you. What is your favorite New Year's Eve memory? Oh, man. When you got attacked. Okay, I got to skip the first one. Uh -huh. no, I got to skip the second one. Okay. The third one is when I did Fox News' New Year's Eve yeah. about four <laughs> or five years ago, mm -hmm. and it was the, the the it was midnight. The the ball dropped, and all the people pushed against the barriers, and the barriers broke, and they all ran over me. And so I lost, like, I, they were supposed to come to me, like, Hammer was supposed to come to me and say something. I was gone. And all who my... had to cover for you? I, me. I, I don't really believe you had to cover oh, for me. Oh, I did. But, but I ran, I, the best, what made it a great memory was that I walked to the West Side Steakhouse on 43rd and 10th. Just left, I just left the scene of the crime. I walked, nobody could find me. I walked straight to the bar, had a steak, and drinks, and then I bought a ticket that night to the Bahamas. Did you have a slab of bacon? <laughs> I had a slab of I bacon. I want you really in my foxhole when no, stuff goes down. No, really, it's Please. really a true story. And they're like, hey, I said, where are you going to go? I was like, no, we can't find him. I go, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, he's gone. All right, so did you guys want to continue with this one, or do you want another question? Yeah, I have question? a big one. Okay, big one. Because my daughter got married, so it would be 11 mm. years ago, so it would be like 07. But she got married on New Year's Eve. That's fun. At night. And I didn't think, I thought it was the worst idea. So I'm paying for this wedding. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Why are you having a wedding at night? You should have a wedding in the springtime with flowers and it should mm -hmm. be in the daylight. Well, the church was just gorgeous. She had like candles, it was only candlelight. And she had these like branches that buds, Beautiful. you know. Oh, it was like spectacular. All and right. of course, that night, the party at the hotel, everybody wanted to party because it was New Year's Yeah, Eve. and you were paying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesse, uh, uh, do you have a favorite New Year's My Eve? My mom memory? always makes me call her right after the ball drops mm -hmm. to just check in to see if I'm safe. Oh. And uh, I think when I was uh, in my late, early 20s, I called and was extremely intoxicated, and I left a voicemail. <laughs> and then my mom and dad would play the voicemail to their friends. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And I finally I made them delete it. Oh, darn, I wanted to hear it. All right, oh, uh, too Kimberly, bad. you're the last to get to go. What do you think? Um, well, I'm hoping it's be this New Year's, because <laughs> I worked all the past New Year's for nine years. <laughs> oh my God! Thanks. But um, yeah, I'm just looking forward actually to New Year's because of 2018. I'm like super ready for a new exciting year and see you know see what happens in the country going forward. All right. Even more answers to your questions when we return. It's fun for a girl and a boy. And slinky mobiles with big slinky wheels and pistons that move as you go. It makes a great sound when you pull it around. The driver's an old timey fellow. A slinky dog. All right, all right. Happy New Year. We have more answers to your questions now. This is a great question. It's from Julie H. What New Year's resolution would you suggest for your co hosts, Jesse? I would say that you and Dana need to be more tolerant of fish in the green room. <laughs> and that includes shrimp, because you guys are really uptight about that. And there is no shrimp smell when you get really good shrimp from Del Frisco's or something like that. Mm -hmm. So just open your mind up a little bit. Mm, that 
No. No? It, it, it smelled. No, day. it did not. It did. No, it did not. <laughs> they were actually probably looking out for you because if it, it's that like malodorous, it might be problematic and you could yes. actually. Yes, we don't want you to get, get sick. sick. Yeah, I was feeling a little queasy. No. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Queasy. <laughs> All right, Kimberly, what resolution would you suggest to whom? <laughs> um, okay, so probably you, Greg. All right. Uh, maybe it would be like to not take your socks off when you travel on the plane with like really weird. <laughs> that happened situations. once. Well, and once was enough. Because you Why? asked. No, I didn't yes, ask. Yes, you did. You I was said, like, I beg of you, please pull your sock off. You weren't no. even sitting next to me. Yes, I was. Dana? <laughs> no, I was, but I was. I and was who was next to Greg? I have one for Kimberly. All I right, was what? next to Greg. I think that Kimberly, that you need to start ha making a habit. Of changing into your flats when you're leaving the building or yes. coming to and fro because it's better for your feet. I think you're right about that. More that sensible was... shoes before and after the show would be good. I, I was probably... that was my suggestion to Juan. <laughs> oh my uh... god, that's probably a good idea. Podiatrists would agree with you. Yes. Juan, uh, I would say you should love people. You should stop hating everybody. Oh. I hate these people. Oh. I hate you're them. Right. I hate them. Right? He should do like opposite day and be like, I love. I think these I did that people. once or twice. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. But for it you. was yeah. like, <laughs> it wasn't <underhanded>. memorable. <laughs> <laughs> I already gave, I already gave mine in the first block, which is, Juan's got to, you got to stop saying guess what because it's spreading. It's spreading. It's spreading. Uh, Everybody's saying you said guess what the other day. Oh my God, Greg, I said it one time <laughs> on the one day one when you day. watched that show at yeah. two o'clock. Oh, see, I watch it every day. Thank you. It's like spreading I'm like the breathing. plague through Fox yeah, that's right. News. It is. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's cause I, it's it's how you end a se it's end a sentence and start a new one. Guess what? Oh. We go to our next question. <laughs> Weird one. This is from Kimberly W. <laughs> if you could have chosen your own first name, think about that for a minute. What would it have been? Juan. Wow, that's a tough one for me because, you know, the thing is, when I was a kid, people would call me Ron or Warren. Mm. I mean, but now these what? days, there's so many <laughs> Latinos in the country that. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, Juan. It's not, it's not that How unusual. How would someone say Ron? Let me tell you, you go in the South and you tell them your name's Juan Williams, and a lot of people come back and say, oh, Ron, nice to meet you. Okay, but, what <laughs> if, but where do you get Warren from? I have no idea. I'm with wow. you. I agree with you. Or wow. how about if you're in your elementary school class in Brooklyn, and people go, one, two, three, and you say, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dana? Well, I didn't want a different name, but I wanted my name spelled differently mm -hmm. because some people, when, when they read it, they think it's Dana. Yes. So I thought it should be D-A-Y-N-A. -A. Yes, that's good. That would look weird, though. Yeah, that's a weird looking... I got weird. over that. Yeah. What about you, Jesse? I would just eliminate my first name and just have a one name Waters, like Cher. Yes. Or Madonna. You are, like, you are at Fox News' Madonna. You really are. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm a material girl. In yes. so many ways. Yes. So many ways. Kimberly? Yeah. Okay, wait, what is this one now? The... Uh, what, uh, <laughs> I thought it was just answer. Chosen your own first name. Oh, own first name. Okay, but I get called Tiffany a lot. Mm. Tiffany. But I don't know why, but I think sometimes people hear Kimberly and they think Tiffany. So you I, would like to be named Tiffany? I don't know. Maybe then they'd be right half the time. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, I, make I it think easier. Mine's obviously would be Caitlin. Oh. Um, what? Oh, this is a. Uh, Tim D asks if you had to choose one artist for bumper music for the whole year, your favorite band, I guess, is what they're talking about. Who would it be? Hmm. So why don't we just start? I don't know. Well, let's go. I went to you for uh, one. Well, I think it'd be upbeat. And since it's, you know, New Year's. You would like Cool in the Gang or something. No, yeah, or I, that's pretty good. I didn't think of that, yeah. but that's excellent. You're or welcome. Prince, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're like in a mellow mood, John Coltrane, right? Mm, there you go. My favorite things. I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah. Jesse, don't say the Imagine Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not like heavy death metal that you always play. <laughs> Anything besides that. <laughs> um, any, any kind of, you know, pop, pop, top 40, something like that. Top 40. Top 40. You really... I'm a big top 40 guy. <laughs> yeah, nobody even uses that phrase yeah, I anymore. Z100, you know, top that's 40. all I listen to. With Casey Kasem. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All the hits, you know, just all the hits. Dana, I think we already know. I, I, would, I would love to give you somebody different, but I can't. I think Dirk Bentley stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. There's enough songs to get through a whole year. Kimberly? Mm -hmm. How about uh, you two, New Year's Day? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. That same song over and over again? I actually really year. like it. I like anything <laughs> U2 is my favorite band. I like U2. Oh. I can tell. Uh, I'm going to get to go, and this is purely to irritate you, Jesse. I'm going to pick oh, Power on. Trip, who had the best death metal, or I would say the best thrash metal album of the year. Thrash metal. Just to annoy you. Yeah. It, and the viewers. And the, Not just me. <laughs> no, the viewers like that kind of music. No, they no, don't. They're clamoring so. for it, no, America. They don't. 
All right, is that it for me? Excellent. The five shall return in a moment. Pop rocks. This is electric candle. Pop rocks. Hey, that is so cool. I can feel my face when I'm with you. But I love it. But I love it. Oh, I can feel my face when I'm with you. Wow, 18's off to a good start for me. I just won the music lottery. That was the best song, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. A few more questions to answer before we reveal our annual predictions. So this question comes from Ann Kay. What do you guys do during the commercial breaks? <clears throat> now, uh, why don't you tell us? Uh, get our freak on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's your new. Oh, we do. Thing, but... No, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, that's yeah. not my news. <laughs> okay, okay. It's more like, we, you know, I dance during the break, we talk, we laugh, and we make fun of Greg. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I sit next to you. I know what you do during the break. They, yes. The makeup people come in. Well, that's <laughs> true. That's true. It's like hair, spray, makeup, whatever. But, you know, but there's a lot of things. Way to ruin on. the mystique, Juan. The mystique. Yeah. No, 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 because guess what I she gave like me for Christmas? Time. She gave me gas a mask. gas mask to protect against the hairspray. <laughs> you know what's amazing? So you finally used guess what correctly. <laughs> you said guess what she gave me. <laughs> oh, my God. Mark the calendar. By the way, by the way this I is also. This a sign. It's auspicious for 2018. I, He's going to use it properly. It's already working. And not gratuitously. So I sit on the left, but I know what goes on on the right during your commercial breaks. Yeah, I usually uh, would. I, if it's about three or four minutes, I usually get up, go outside, see if is there's anybody, right? any oh, any yeah. people on the street need any help. No. Oh, yeah. I usually uh, whip no, up something no. in the kitchen. Tell the truth. You go on Twitter to see if people are saying it. That's what I see if a joke works. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank it's you. like a video Thank game. You. It's like a video game. You go no. on to see what your score is. You're obsessed. You're obsessed. This is what happens. Dana just worries about all of the people that are watching out there and is afraid to go outside. Greg is usually complaining about a personal issue. Kimberly's uh, usually either on her phone or the, the spray from the hair stuff's getting in Juan's face. And then Juan just kind of sits there and doesn't say anything and acts like he has no idea what's going on. And you Similar check to, to see, when the cameras are on. And you go. check to see if your mom has sent you a text. Yes, and we're looking at mom's And text. turns his phone on so it goes ding, 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 yeah. ding, yeah, ding, ding. Oh, that, that drives Dana crazy. Yep. <laughs> I do it on purpose. He hates that. Yeah. Anyway, question from Lynn H. Yeah. What one subject is the most difficult for you to control your temper when discussing? Mm. Mm. You want to start? Mm. Dana? Yep. Torture. Or otherwise known as enhanced interrogation techniques. I would say that's so true. I, I lose my temper on that yes. a little bit. Yes. Because you think it's wrong? Well, because... because <laughs> no! Because Juan, you're kidding, right? You're being facetious. I'm asking. She comes uh, from the Bush White House. They I have don't know where she <laughs> comes from. I don't know which... But She's a killer! That's what are you saying? No, I just... I feel like that debate got so distorted and oh, the political... Debate and about it was unfair I, I uh, to uh, his... Uh, what... what the Bush administration was trying to do in order right. to protect the country. And to the attorneys that wrote the memorandum. Absolutely. It was like persecution. And to, and, and to the uh, CIA interrogators. Correct. Who were asked to do a very difficult thing that was legal. Jesse. No, just <laughs> talking about Donald Trump with liberals, especially my family members. It's very frustrating. So now I, my policy is stay out of it. Don't give him anything to work with. Just say yes. <laughs> yes, I know. He's bad. He's really bad. No. What, what, what way, to, way to cower. I just did the whole thing. Yeah, okay. So, Greg? I don't know. I, tr I try to make sure that I'm not emotional about anything. But I have to say, I, oh, on the... Robots? Yeah, robots scare the crap out of me. But that's another... I would say, on the five, I would say religion, because I can't go anywhere. Like, I have to be so careful about what I say. That's probably... But that's not upsetting. See, I feel like I have to be careful on all topics. <laughs> yeah! <that's, laughs> yeah! Not just religion. That is so true. Dana and I are kindred spirits as it relates to national security and enhanced interrogation, so... I, so, I get, I I get sometimes really riled up inside when I hear people talking about the NFL players mm -hmm. protest. I think, what's wrong with saying that you think something is bad and doing it in a way that's nonviolent and taking advantage of it. But, you know, racial discussion sometimes just... I just, I, I just think, wow, people are living a different life than I'm living. Well, I mean, it's a hard thing to discuss because there's a, a group of people who are too scared to talk about it for fear of being called racist. I don't know who that is because I think... I'm not pretty, saying who that I is. Think, I think there are a lot of people, especially <laughs> you talk about identity politics in a negative way, say, oh, the minorities. In a negative way. Yeah, yeah, because he says... We play identity politics too much in this country. Liberals. Am I right? I'm liberals saying liberals too. too. Right. I think that's the only tool they have in their tool shed. He's not saying both sides. He's no, just saying he's just liberals like you. He's right. Yeah. That's yes. what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. And what I'm saying to you is I think identity politics, especially in the Trump era, is played by white America to, yeah. to a fairly well. And yet, oh. guess who's on the defensive? All right. Here's a question from Sharon Kay. 
if you could pick someone famous to marry, uh, this is not fair for you, Kimberly, but if you could pick someone famous <laughs> to God. marry, who would you pick? Kimberly. Oh, man. I'm trying to cut back. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful Sam. answer. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, no. How about Caitlin? <laughs> Caitlin, who would you pick? Oh, jeez. Um, I guess I would pick myself. There Ooh, we go. Yes, yes. You That's a that. Jesse answer. <laughs> yes. Let's be honest. I've always Did wanted to marry me. Yeah. In a tasteful ceremony. Maybe wearing white linen out on a beach, barefoot. Oh. The pictures would be divine. Beautiful. Just me walking alone on the beach. Oh, my I God. I have a Kimberly esque yeah. answer. I would marry someone in the royal family because then yeah. you could take part in all the pomp and circumstance and. You know, you get to wave like this. Maybe and... I should change my answer. Yeah, change your I think answer. I'm destined for this. I even already have my own. It crown. would be a royal pain. I <laughs> would be amazing. We'll be right back. Come on. <laughs> but you, so you would marry a rich person? A royal rich person. A which royal is redundant. rich person. So, he oh. doesn't want to marry a poor royal with some of <laughs> what, what is titles. the point? Yeah. That is a th There's now, no good in that. You, you really made a choice because you were like, I'm, I need to find somebody. I remember you saying you can't find a man. Well, he is British, but yeah. he is not part of the royal family. But who would you pick? If you could pick no, anybody. No, I, I honestly think my marriage is the best thing that ever happened to me. So I, I think I'm agree. good. Are you agree? Everyone loves I Peter. I think she, uh, yeah, Peter go. is absolutely fantastic. All right. Stay right there. Our Perfect. predictions for Dave. 2018. Straight ahead. Each new year, we make our annual predictions. We get some right, Dana. We get some wrong. Let's see if we can get them all right this year, shall we? Okay, so mine I kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but bear with me because I actually feel very uh, bullish about this. I really think that we're going to have a phenomenal economy, okay, continue because you see the progression of the way the market is going. And now I think if they can get the tax reform, everything focused and lined up, we're going to be in great shape. Job creation, a GDP of 3% or better in 2018. Please let me be right. Boom. Boom. That's how we do it. Dana Perino, what have you? Fast this I've got year. three. Last year was pretty good. I did predict that Al Franken would position himself to run for Congress. I did not see... President. 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 I'm sorry, President. But um, I didn't see the uh, Me Too movement coming. So I was wrong on that. And I predicted Kate Middleton would be pregnant with her third child. And then I... Had one wrong on Angela Merkel. So on this one, I think the Bitcoin bubble will burst, and that it will have like far wider implications to the system than people realize. A lot of hedge fund guys had been flat, so they started gambling on all of it, and that is going to burst. Wow. I think Justice Anthony Kennedy will retire. Wow, this that's year. a big one. And I think that my sister Angie will get another cat. <laughs> she has four rescue cats. The fourth, the little one there, was just added this year, and she swears she's not going to get another one, but I think it could be an addiction, and I predict a fifth cat. Meow. Meow, meow. I wow. Greg. predict that she will not stop at five cats <laughs> because she's a young woman, which is so scary to become a cat lady at a young age. My goodness. She's sweet, gracious. though. Yeah, but... Maybe stop at, four, stop at four cats. Well, that's stop a at four thing. Cats. She, she said she's stopping at four. That gets to be a lot of cats. It's a, a lot of cats. Point. I have I a friend They're who cute, hates though. cats. Um, like, just can't stand to be around them. It's amazing. Oh, that's well, some people get allergies. Okay? Yes. About, but I must say... Juan, you, do you have a 25-point uh, <laughs> item for us here? No, no, no. But I was just going to say that my son is a huge um. consumer of cat videos. <laughs> and it's just, it's just like one of these things that everybody in the family just can't... Grass, what is going on? Yeah, that's what he tells you. They're oh, cat videos. Okay. <laughs> what are you watching, cat videos? Leave me alone. But you used to why do, do you have to, Why does the door have to be you locked? You say that, but you used to do that all the time. Like, How does it feel about net neutrality? <laughs> oh, net neutrality. Let me tell you something. It just, it just freezes me up. It's not something that gets me going. All right. Why? Oh, that's a tricky question for Tony. Because... Wait, wasn't this a prediction yes. segment? Uh, <laughs> I did my predictions. I did, well, oh, you did? Why? I was just going to say, though, for my Juan, son... your predictions. Oh, you want a prediction? <laughs> Other predictions? I was reacting that's to what you segment. were saying. Oh. Okay, so I, I think, uh, one, 
you know, it's too much to ask for impeachment or indictment. Oh, oh come on, Juan. Oh. But I will say, I think the Democrats take back the House and maybe even the Senate. No. Uh, no. 24 seats. I think this is a wave election for Democrats this year. So that's yeah. my prediction. Wave number two, goodbye. Number two, and this one's really for my lovely friend to my left here, Mr. Jesse Waters. Oh, no. No wall, no wall, <laughs> no wall. No, I mean, yeah. ground will be broken. Oh, I see. I'm not saying they're going to wreck yeah. the whole thing. But ground will be broken. Guess what? And I'll Not be happen. down there with a shot. Can we take a field trip right. there? Wouldn't that be so the sweet? Five goes on the road to the border. Can you imagine Jesse doing selfies in front of the wall? No, no, no. I've the wall Hannity before. Hannity did this. Han remember Hannity in the boat with the guns? And oh. oh, this is a Fox News true story. There is. All right, all right. <laughs> I and, love it. What and else? then finally, I'm an eternal optimist when it comes to rooting for my sports teams, my soap opera of choice. So I believe that the Washington football team will win a game. In 2018. You mean the Redskins? Right? No, no. The, but by the Just way, one game? if I was, by the way, if I have a prediction <laughs> on sports that I think is going to be true, it's good for you and your Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's my prediction. I say the Super Eagles Bowl. are going to be in the Super Bowl this year, and they're probably going to be playing the Pats, New England, and Foles has really stepped up after Carson Wentz went down. I think the Eagles finally. This is going to be our year. We're going to bring home the Lombardi Trophy and Juan's Washington Redskins. No, no, no. You shouldn't. Are use not even going to make the playoffs fact, the next year. In fact, you know, recently the big thing in Washington was somebody put out a fake news story. I don't know. It, it, the address was 1600 Pennsylvania, calling them the Red Hawks. I was like, well, that's not bad. You like the name change? Well, anything would be better than a slur. I don't think it's a slur. Well, of course it's I a slur. I think your performance is a slur. Look at the dictionary. <laughs> and if you want to see my performance, go to Broadway, son. Then you'll say, right. wow, this guy's, this guy's terrific. Yeah, you're dancing all right. Greg Inns? <laughs> uh, well, I have two predictions. One, and I, I'll probably become about 35% better looking, <laughs> maybe 12% funnier, and 16% smarter. Wow. I, Impossible. I, with a plus or minus 3%. And I also predict that this year's Oscars will be the shortest ever because there will only be four presenters because <laughs> everyone else has fled the country. <laughs> oh, my God. But, Juan, I want to tell you something. I had yeah. some more little predictions here that I kind of tag on to yours. Okay. But um, I think that, actually, they might gain four, the Republicans, in the Senate. But we're going to definitely lose some in the House, but hopefully not more than... Well, you know, with Doug Jones, what is it now, 51, 49, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the landscape, the field, favors Republicans. It's just that I think it's going to be a wave election year for the Democrats, so I don't know. I mean, usually Nothing. that's what happens, right? Yeah, because happened it happened under Obama, so it happened. Yeah, the it opposite, happened. the party yeah. opposite the incumbent of the White well, House. Well, then it yeah, corrects itself and sort of the pendulum swings back. But, Jesse, you think it should be a little bit more optimistic since. Uh, yeah, I mean, White it's House too early campaign. to make that prediction. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. That the is thing true. is, Jesse, Republicans Jesse. could add seats in both chambers, Juan, so you never know. You know, we could just. Have all Republicans all the time, Jesse. Would that make you happy? Well, we have it right now. I think, and, uh, <laughs> yes. pretty good. I think he's going to finish out uh, the last two years of this term of this presidency with majorities in both. I you do. think? Yeah, I do. Oh, I, I, I would be surprised, but it's possible. If the economy is good. The economy you know, is going good. Going into midterm elections, and if, oh, if it continues to make strides, then yeah. I think so. All right, let's do it. It's the economy, stupid. Yes, exactly. No offense. <laughs> that was a saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please don't go away. I beg you. One more question <laughs> next. Playing all the hits, Greg. <laughs> yes. Welcome back to The Five. We have time now for one more question from one of our viewers. All right. Kim F. wants to know, if all five had to work together to start a new business, what would it be? Hey, Jay, what do you think? Thank you for calling on me. It would be to take over the Oval with Dana Perino, president, me as VP, and dominate the world, fix all of these Wait, are problems. Are we members of the cabinet also or not? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no men? Just us. Just, yes, okay. So that we violated don't. the question. It was supposed to be all five. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, we'll let you visit and come to dinner, and you can come to the White House Christmas party, and we'll oh, give thank you, you like, little, like, I'll... czar titles. You can be robot czar. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not going to go to the White House Ro and beg for a job. Robot czar, bad, bad idea czar, and ego czar. Ego czar. All right. I think that's the same as the president. It's the same <laughs> thing. Oh, my God. Okay. Juan. I think we should start a food truck. <laughs> nice. That's a good idea. I would you agree. know what? Because everybody could cook, and then we could, like, 
drive the truck. We could have so much fun. Yeah, we could make a lot like of money that. too. Yeah. People love food. I would do a media <laughs> training business. So oh, that's people I was who want say. to go on television and we know what we like when we are looking at guests on TV so we could help them. I was going to say political consulting and then that's going to be under the umbrella. Okay, that's fine. Of that. I'll have the offshoot. Okay, and you can do the polling, Greg. Oh, fantastic. You know I love polling. I my choice would be a tiki bar. <laughs> well, it's just basically one of the greatest bars uh, I know, you can. Love uh, that. Yeah, and they're disappearing everywhere. There's a few bars in San Francisco Remember that are the so one, good. The tiki room or something. Tiki, the, the one that has the the waterfall. Correct. The waterfall. It's uh, what's the name of it? It's in um. I thought it was damn it. called the tiki. It's in, uh, in the it's, Fairmont. It's in, it's underneath the hotel of right. Fairmont. Yes. Yeah, but isn't it called the tiki room? I don't think so. But it's got a waterfall and a boat. Inside the bar, That's and every cool. 10 minutes it starts raining, and they have the bar, they have the drinks and the coconuts. We should open a tiki bar. So, what would Kimberly's role be within the tiki bar? Obviously, I think she would be the hostess. 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 That would lead you to the. To, I don't to know the... how to make any drinks. Yeah. So clearly. All right, who would be mixing the drinks? Um, I think... Greg. I guess I'd, no, I do. He I, wants I, to be the owner. He yeah, just wants yeah, to Yeah, I want to be the guy that collect. sits around and walks around and says, How are you doing? <laughs> hey, everything going okay? <laughs> How's Dana treating you? I'll collect the money. <laughs> You'll count the money. Tonga room? Conga room? Something Wait, room. I'm, what I'm do we do with Juan? Conga room. I'm we Tonga room. Tiki what do we do with Juan? Is Juan? No, but I say I'm not coming Fair because I'm on tiki torches these days. I don't know. Always playing the race card. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's How dare you smear tiki lounges in bars? I tell you who smeared them. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that's cultural appropriation, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tiki bar. I don't even know if we can hey, get away with that. So yeah. it's the Tonga Room and Hurricane Bar at the Fairmont Hotel <laughs> in yes. San Francisco. It's fantastic. That's your trip and we wear little update. grass skirts or something like that. That would no. be cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. Too cold. Too cold? Well, it's a tiki bar. It would be like leg warmers, like leggings. Wait a minute. So we could have the tiki bar like in the Caribbean? Oh, yeah, or we sure. could just have it down the street. No, it's too so cold. After, afterwards, no, because New York doesn't have any good tiki bars. We could have one down Wait, the street. Wait, do they street. have a lot of Can bad tiki bars? Can I tell you something? Yes. <laughs> there might be one, bad tiki there might be one in the village that I By think way, I've been to East Village. By the way, in all your bad ideas, this is actually, I'm not even kidding you, you don't a need great to, idea. People, only, people don't go there to eat. They just go there to drink, maybe have some No, you can have, have some, some tapas. Yeah. yeah what yeah. do you eat at a tiki bar? What's the fare? The poo-poo platter. The poo-poo platter? poo-poo <laughs> platter, which has basically has, has 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 ribs. No, it has ribs. You usually can have bar barbecued ribs and, and some chicken wings. I like this idea. Okay. Yeah, it's Investors, call me. Wait, whatever happened to Benny Hanna's? They're not around anymore. No, Benny Hanna's is still around. There's one in Long Island. And There's they still throw seconds. things at your face, and you have to eat it. They throw, oh. Yeah, you know, kids, they flip the yeah, shrimp. Yeah, yeah, Kids love that stuff. But I don't even know. What I mean, else? The, what is the one? The one I like is uh, more, but it's a big here. What's it called? I can't. Like, a, or, like Asian food? Why Benny Hanna. Not Benny Hanna. That's the one I said I was not. That's, I this is why we have open table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Set your DVRs. Wow. Never miss an episode of The Five. Zagat. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Again, Happy New Year. Happy now. New Year.